The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verses 13 through 17. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord is his land, with the precious things of heaven, with the dew, and the deep lying beneath, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months, with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the precious things of the everlasting hills, with the precious things of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. His glory is like a firstborn bull, and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the, te- the thousands of Manasseh. So we will continue to look at the reward that is contained in the birthright of Christ, which is presented to us in the name of Joseph, which is our inheritance in Christ Jesus. And this reward is comprised of nine components. This is the image of the gifts from heaven. This is the image of dew. The image of the gifts of the deep lying beneath. The image of the precious fruits of the sun. The image of the precious produce of the moon. The image of the best things of the ancient mountains, the image of the precious gifts of the everlasting hills, the image of the precious things of the earth in its fullness, and the image of the blessings of the one who appeared in the burning bush. Today, we will look at the sixth component of our reward. The sixth component of our reward that belongs to Christ in the name Joseph, placed on our account in Christ, is the image of the best things of the ancient mountains. The best things of the ancient mountains is an image of the produce of the fruits of righteousness. What kind of righteousness? Righteousness that is contained in a covenant of peace, grown by us through the collaboration of our good heart with the truth of the reigning teaching of Christ and the revelations of the Holy Spirit. Psalms 36, 6. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. So in order for us to have the best things of the ancient mountains, it is necessary for us to place the righteousness of God in the atmosphere of the covenant of peace that is unblemished by sin and to grow it into strong mountains through the collaboration of our good heart with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit who uncovers to us the meaning of this Word. And when we grow this righteousness of God into great mountains, these mountains are going to have depths that are known as our fate. But first, it is necessary for us to understand that the ancient mountains in our body is a great fate from God or the good depth that is called to swallow up in our body the bad depth in the face of the old man with his works. This is the great fate that a person can have, a person who has in his essence these best things of the ancient mountains. It turns out that in these mountains, there are these unattainable depths of revelations and as we see these depths are the great fate that is contained for us so that the good depth in the face of the new man could swallow up in our body the bad depth in the face of the old man with his works deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 the eternal god is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Who is going to thrust out an enemy? The eternal God. How? Through our new man. When he comes to the full measure of the stature of Christ or when we grow the fruit of righteousness in our spirit. And this is what the eternal God will do. The word eternal, defining the nature of God, means Eternal is lasting, former, unchanging, faithful, able, the one who is vigilant over his word so that it could be fulfilled. 
whereas the phrase everlasting eternal mountains, defining God's righteousness contained in eternal mountains, are the promises that are eternal and unchanging, is the righteousness of God from the east, is righteousness that is unshakable, that coincides with the nature of the Almighty. It is through the collaboration with God, with the eternal God, because God says your refuge is the eternal God. Through this, we are able to raise up ancient mountains in the subject of that righteousness that is in our heart. And that righteousness in which we will see the depth of our fate. And this fate is to swallow up the bad depth in the face of the old man in our essence. And of course, once these mountains are raised up in our heart, in our essence, devil does not sleep. He is going to offer us other mountains that are going to discredit our mountains. And he will try to remove our mountains so that we do not affirm the promises that are on our mountains. Isaiah 54, 10 says, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my mercy shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. A question then, what are these mountains that will be moved by God for the affirmation of His immovable covenant of peace with us? Mountains and hills that are going to be moved are an image of power and authority. And so in this case, we are referring to kinds of mountains and hills that served for us as authority when we were found in democratic structures, and they were a standard of imitation for us. But in fact, they will betray us, and using the power and authority will resist us on the way to withstanding the way of knowledge and fulfillment of the will of God. Mountains shall depart means will seize their influence and retreat, and hills will be removed means they will be rolled down. The mercy of God in the format of the law of God's peace, unlike the authorities, will not depart from us and will not be shaken. Isaiah 49 verses 13 through 16 says the following, Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. And the Lord then asks a question, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. We right now are going to sing a psalm and thank God that we have the great privilege to see the best fruits of the ancient or the everlasting mountains in our heart. Then what we know as the ancient mountains is the fruit of righteousness that has grown in the covenant of peace. They are grown through the collaboration of our good heart with the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. And when this righteousness of God will be grown into great and mighty ancient mountains, then we will have depths and fate. And our fate that will be open to us in which we will see that God wants to swallow up the bad depth with the good depth and to raise up in its place the power of life and resurrection. Therefore, let us stand and sing a psalm to the Lord and affirm His righteousness on our mountains.
with great joy will remind us and repeat after Pastor Arkady that each time the people of Israel had honored God with tithes and offerings, either in the tabernacle of Moses or the temple of Solomon, they were called to, according to the words of Moses, that he received as a revelation from God to raise their hands over their offerings and to proclaim one wonderful proclamation that they were faithful to for thousands of years. We, being that same Israel, tied to that same root, drinking from the same olive tree, will do the same thing. Please raise your right hand, a symbol of your righteous act, and please pray together with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have separated the tithes from my home and have brought them into your home so that your home may have food. I do not give in sorrow. I do not give impurely. I do not give for the dead. I deeply believe in your unchanging word, and I am glad that I have the privilege to express my love and to acknowledge your authority. And now, according to your word, I plead, may your heavenly windows be opened, and may your blessings come down abundantly upon your redeemed nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May you be blessed. Please be seated. <laughs> 